Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli, and in this video, I had the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Mitchell Felder, who believes he's found a revolutionary, yet shockingly straightforward approach to cure the root cause of infectious diseases, including cancer, hepatitis, Alzheimer's, and any other blood-related illness. Pretty cool. Because his approach uses a first principle toward treating disease by removing the pathogen itself, he believes it can even be used to treat obesity and other ailments. Sound crazy, right? Stay tuned to hear it for yourself. Dr. Felder is a graduate of both the University of Pennsylvania and a graduate of the University of Rome Faculty of Medicine. He's board certified in neurology and an attending neurologist. He's the inventor of 23 medical patents and co-author on seven published medical articles and his most notable work, which we'll discuss at length, The Felder Doctrine. Also, if you're new here, welcome. For the past 15 years, I've been a professional poker player and coach and have traveled to 50 plus countries to compete in the biggest cash games and tournaments around the world. Poker has taught me many things about life and decision making, including how to look for amazing asymmetric opportunities to invest my time in like the one I'm about to share with you today. Be sure to subscribe to this channel to be notified when new opportunities come your way. Also, in full transparency, I'm a consultant and a shareholder at Halbert, the company which owns the patents for Dr. Felder's revolutionary methodology. One of my goals with this video is really to just raise awareness about what we're doing at Halbert in hopes to find people that can help us uh, further our mission to eradicate infectious diseases worldwide. We're looking for financial and marketing help, so if you or someone you know could assist, my contact details are in the description. Please get in touch with me directly and I'll get back to you. Lastly, Halbert is a publicly traded company which operates under the ticker symbol HALB, H-A-L-B. Nothing discussed in this video is financial advice, but for educational purposes only. You are responsible for all the investments you make, do your own research before making any bets, and know that investing in any startup is very risky, most lose all their money, and remember that I'm just some poker player on the internet. Got it? Cool. Now I introduce to you, Dr. Felder. Dr. Felder, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a real honor. Awesome. So talk to me about your vision for the world and some of the things you'd like to see happen in your lifetime with some of the things you're currently working on. I'd like to see us curing cancer, curing all infectious diseases, slowing the aging process. And I think that's actually possible. Yeah, and I'm excited to get into how that's going to happen. And that's amazing and something I think we can all get behind. And that's largely what drew me into Halbert, frankly, is this massive asymmetry, both in its mission to truly change the world, and frankly, not many companies can say that, but also as an investor. I mean, the risk reward is just phenomenal because if we can pull this off and really cure the root cause of infectious disease, the rewards are going to be truly incredible. So Halbert really does check all the boxes for me. You know, people that follow me know that I'm big into decision making, especially as it relates to taking calculated risks with my poker background, of course. So I'd be curious to know, how did you come to the decision to dedicate your life to curing infectious diseases, something that many people still believe is impossible, right? So perhaps you can bring us up to speed on how you got involved with Halbert and what you do there. Well, I'm an attending neurologist. I was a resident in neurology at St. Vincent's Hospital in New York, where I was chief resident. And certainly as a practicing neurologist, I've seen many, many people either die or have severe morbidity, mortality from infectious diseases. And I came up with the Felder Doctrine, which in one sentence explains how to cure almost any disease, including cancer. And that one sentence is, physically remove the pathophysiologic basis of the disease. So if one, instead of treating symptoms or blocking proteins or et cetera, if one could actually physically remove and slash or eradicate the causation of disease, one can beat it. And that's an amazing concept. Yeah, and that is amazing. And I want to get more into the Felder Doctrine and exactly how it works. But it makes sense as a first principle, right? Like you have something in the body that's not supposed to be there. So why would you add more of a foreign substance with known side effects to the body as a cure for that uh, ailment, right? Doesn't it only make sense to go into the body and remove 
what it should be there as like a first principle approach towards uh, this cure. So it sounds so simple. It makes so much sense to me. And uh, that's why I love this elegant solution. So uh, like I said, it sounds simple and it's an elegant solution, but of course not simple to implement. But my question is, you know, how come nobody's thought of this before? And why is there so much resistance to this idea? Well, I think most of the medical profession is very, very conservative and they want to see things completely proven until they start even minimally believing anything. And this is somewhat like the Manhattan Project that, you know, you started out with an equation N equals MC squared and that can equal an atom bomb, but then building a bomb and implementing it took the entire Manhattan Project, which took $3 billion in 1940s money and many tens of thousands of workers and scientists. But this is an incredibly exciting concept in that it can easily beat just about any possible infectious disease. And it could be cancer and Alzheimer's disease. And I believe it could even slow aging. Let's review with the Felder Doctrine, physically remove the pathophysiologic basis of the disease. So let's say, for example, somebody has septicemia, which is, kills 300,000 people a year in the United States. What is septicemia? Fancy word for bacteria in the blood. Somebody cuts their foot and then they get a severe fever and then they start having shutdown of their kidneys, their liver, it goes to the brain, et cetera, and kills them rather rapidly. I came up with the idea that, okay, great. If you could have take the blood and use a sort of dialysis process and use a monoclonal antibody, which attaches to the bacteria that is killing the person and then irradiate it with either a laser or radio frequency, you've eradicated it. You've killed it. Now, what's exciting about that? First of all, uh, and we've successfully done this with Youngstown State University and Professor Sturris and his physics department. And we've done this in test tubes so far. That's a very exciting concept because if you think about it, there's no such thing as an a, uh, infection that could ever have resistance. Can't have resistance to a laser. So you could kill tuberculosis. You could kill any amoeba, staphylococcus. Caucus, streptococcus, why not kill COVID-19 virus? There's nothing you can't kill. And what we've done so far, I call the Kitty Hawk level, is the Kitty Hawk flight in 1903 with the Wright brothers showed that, yes, you could have a heavier than air machine contraption that could fly. And that contraption which was made by two bicycle manufacturers, flew a grand total of 120 feet at 40 miles per hour. But that same concept then led to the space shuttle, to uh, voyages to Mars, to everything. So once you've implemented this successfully, which we have done at Youngstown State University with Professor Sturris, and the terrific help of Professor Chen from Arizona State University, who's brilliant at making antibodies, proprietary antibodies, there's really nothing that you can't kill, eradicate with this methodology. And you can either do it in spinal fluid against uh, neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, uh, et cetera, or you could do it against infectious diseases in the blood. And all you have to do is look at the pathophysiologic basis of any disease. And that then gives you a roadmap to cure the disease. So for example, with cancer, and I have a YouTube video that goes into this, one would get eradicate tumor growth factor. Now you don't have to go to medical school to know, gee, I've got cancer and I've got something called tumor growth factor, which causes what? Tumor growth. Okay, great. So you have this antibody with a metallic moiety attached, which then attaches to it 
and then eradicates it with a laser. And it does this outside the body. The other terrific thing, and there's so many angles from this that are terrific, is that there can never, you're not adding anything to the body. You're just physically eradicating and removing that which is causing the disease. And you could do, for example, five cc's of blood. I mean, and did this work out correctly? So if you did five cc's of blood and the whole system wasn't working very well, you could shut it down immediately. I probably lost more than five cc's of blood making dinner the other night when I cut my finger. So again, you, you have a, a very innocuous process that you could stop at any time you could start at any time, that you're eradicating exactly, perfectly that which is causing the problem. This concept is also very exciting with neurodegenerative diseases, with traumatic brain injury, with psychiatric problems such as suicidal ideation. Why is that? Because, for example, with traumatic brain injury, uh, when someone is hit in the head or near an explosion, like a soldier, et cetera, what happens? There is an outpouring, a massive pour, outpouring of what's called an excitatory neurotransmitter called glutamate, okay? Right now, Professor Chen at Arizona State University is designing a proprietary monoclonal antibody that will attach to glutamate so that now you could eradicate it with a laser in an extracorporeal manner using, you, you have CSF that you'd get from a standard spinal tap. You could then eradicate the glutamate using our method. And this would then prevent a cascade of problems that cause traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic brain injury problems. And this goes for literally any disease, for Alzheimer's disease with CSF, uh, the neuropathologic basis of it are two major problems, amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. Uh, we've already successfully shown in a test tube that we're able to eradicate um, phosphorylated tau, which is the building block of neurofibrillary tangles. We believe we could make a very major breakthrough against Alzheimer's disease by cleansing the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, that bathes the brain with the building blocks that cause Alzheimer's disease. What are those building blocks? Well, there's amyloid plaques from beta amyloid. Uh, there's neurofibrillary tangles. Neurofibrillary tangles are made up of phosphorylated tau. Uh, and then there's a third step, which is a combination of inflammatory cytokines, such as interleukin IL-2, TNF-alpha, et cetera. We have already successfully at Youngstown State University with Professor Sturris shown that we can, in just 10 minutes, we can eradicate phosphorylated tau. That's phenomenal because that then opens the door to preventing neurofibrillary tangles, which is the main building block of Alzheimer's disease from even being developed. And if patients then had this cleansing process, I don't know, once a month, once every three months, depending on their clinical situation, it would prevent Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, it's amazing how ubiquitous this a treatment approaches and how many different fields of medicine that it can apply to because it uses that first principle approach of just eradicating the disease itself. So talk to me about how this is potentially um, different from the end user's experience uh, when it comes to current methodologies, such as like chemo for cancer and talk about some of the, the, what the process is that they're actually going to go through. Let's say you're a patient, what can they expect when using this treatment and talk about why it's a superior treatment for the patient? Well, once perfected, I think it would be far, far superior to anything that is out there or exists presently in 2021. The reason being is 
Uh, chemo is sort of like uh, you have Son of Sam in New York killing people. So let's drop an atom bomb on New York and we're going to kill Son of Sam and get rid of them. OK, well, what this is doing is attacking a disease in an extremely uh, perfect, intricate manner. You're going after the exact perfect um, basis of the disease. You're getting rid of it. You're eradicating it. And you, you could do either one or a, few, a combination of target antigens all at once. So uh, with each disease, it'll be different. With septicemia, it's pretty darn simple. You, you have, I don't know, streptococcus, uh, bacteremia, guess what? Just get rid of streptococcus. Cancer is obviously much, much, much more complicated, but this would be light years more sophisticated than anything that presently exists. This would get rid of the uh, basis of why the, uh, these, this cancer is able to metastasize, why it's able to propitiate, uh, it gets rid of everything and it can get rid of combinations of those. Even more exciting, it has the potential for uh, controlling the immune system to eradicate the cancer. I like to call this God's method of curing cancer. What I mean by that is every oncologist knows or has seen uh, cases of patients with very advanced cancer that they didn't think would, the patient would live 10 minutes and yet survived, left the hospital and lived for many years. Well, that one patient in 100,000 is not a miracle. There is a pathophysiologic basis of that. And I believe the pathophysiologic basis for that patient is there are uh, proteins such as CTLA-4, PD-1, which exactly control the immune system. And this method opens the door, swings the door open to now exactly controlling the picogram per ML concentration of those extremely important uh, proteins such as CTLA-4, PD-1, et cetera, or combinations of those proteins with other uh, molecules that are involved in in uh, cancer, such as tumor growth factor, et cetera, that then, and that would probably be able to beat any cancer. Uh, this will require extremely advanced computers, possibly quantum computers, because it's almost like trying to control the weather uh, in a very complicated process, but I, I think it is doable. And at the very least, we could start with single target antigens. For example, glutamate has been shown to uh, increase uh, the growth and metastasis, et cetera, and of glioblastoma multiforme. And glutamate is also involved, of course, in traumatic brain injury. And it's involved in Alzheimer's disease. If you go on Google, you can punch up umpteen medical articles showing exactly what I'm talking about. So once Professor Chen comes up with a proprietary antibody with a metallic moiety attached to it, and a little teeny uh, metal attached to the, the antibody, which attaches to glutamate, you then take the spinal fluid, you then irradiate it with a laser or radio frequency to eradicate it. You eradicate it in the exact perfect concentrations that will cure the patient. And then you put it back. And that, that is gonna be 21st century medicine. I believe this is gonna be at some point done completely by robots and computers. Wow. That's, that's fascinating. So talk to me about, um, the cost for the end user. Um, because it, uh, of course that's going to be a huge component of this and what, what's it going to be like for them in terms of cost of, of course it varies on the disease, but just overall, how, how do you see this 
uh, technology advancing. And what's a timeline like for this? I mean, obviously people um, are going to be curious about the, these advancements. W- what's a what's a potential timeline and what are some of the bottlenecks right now that are a challenge to achieving that timeline? Well, the timeline is, as I said, it's the Manhattan Project. And right now we don't have that many people involved and we're a small company, but we are looking for uh, the U.S. government, for the U.S. Army, for very major corporations to come in and help run with the bull. But uh, we have to reach a certain level of uh, show proof of concept successfully, which I believe we have done quite a bit at Youngstown State University to attract the correct attention, at which point I believe this could then massively speed up and we could start going after one uh, disease after the other. Yep. So what would the, the cost be like? The irony of this is that uh, one area, I have received a, a granted patent for cocaine syndrome. Cocaine syndrome causes rapid aging. Uh, there's a lot of billionaires out there who have everything on planet Earth, but they, they don't have one thing. They can't live forever, and they'd like to, as I'm sure plenty of people. So I'm hoping that that will attract a lot of attention, that Uh, The fact that I've been granted this patent for cocaine syndrome, um, which can also be linked into helping beat Alzheimer's disease, et cetera, and other neurodegenerative correct attention that could very, very much speed up what we're doing. Yep. Cool. What would be the cost for the end user for something like this? Is it going to cost a fortune? The cost for this could end up much less than... The present cost. First of all, somebody's dying of cancer and they're in an intensive care unit, that could cost who knows, twenty, forty thousand dollars a day. Here you're talking about doing a process, doing it efficiently. You're not even adding anything to the body, you're just physically taking it out or eradicating that which is detrimental. And I would envision that once perfected, this would be far less expensive than basically what's out there for every disease. What about some side effects of this? What can users expect? What what, are, what would you imagine as a side effect of the Felder Doctrine's approach toward uh, curing diseases? I think once this is perfected, there should be literally no side effects. The reason, as I explained, is if the, there's a problem with the what of the te- technique, okay, you have somebody who's got septicemia, start trying to eradicate the uh, bacteria in the blood. You do five cc's and the, the methodology is going awry. You could stop it immediately. So the patient's lost almost zero blood. Nothing's happened. Nothing's gone back into their body. Compare that to, okay, they're dying of septicemia. Let's say streptococcus septicemia. And an infectious disease specialist goes into the intestine intensive care unit and starts giving them three, four, five massive doses of intravenous antibiotics simultaneously in a desperate attempt to save their life. Well, guess what? Now you've got a whole plethora of side effects because now it's inside their body. You can't get any of this out. With penicillin, for example, it can cause epileptic seizures for starters. You start shutting down the kidney. Here you've got none of that. And that is very exciting. And also, no no infectious disease, obviously, could ever, even potentially, even theoretically, have any kind of resistance against a laser. It's dead. And that's it. It can't develop resistance. That's not true of antibiotics or antiviral agents. All infectious diseases, by definition, can start developing resistance against these these, uh, treatments. While here, it would be completely impossible, even theoretically, that anything, any uh, infectious agent could ever have any resistance. And that, that, again, is a very exciting concept. So you could use this treatment against 
a multi-drug resistant tuberculosis against MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus. The list goes on and on and on. All we have to do is we have Professor Chen make proprietary antibody with the metallic moiety against what do you want to kill and then kill it with a laser or with radio frequency, whichever is most efficacious. Cool. And that is very exciting. Absolutely. No question. Um, sounds like the, the perfect approach if it can be brought to uh, fruition and, and perfected, like you said. So what initial steps have been achieved to date in advancing this technology? And perhaps you could talk about some of the most recent developments and where we're at now and uh, what you see as the next steps. Well, what we've done so far, especially at Youngstown State University with Professor Sturris, is we have shown that we can eradicate IL, uh, IL-6 from uh, cerebral spinal fluid and um, phosphorylated tau we've eradicated successfully. And we've done this in as little as 10 minutes. That is very exciting because there's no product that presently exists that eradicates those um, those molecules that are the basis of Alzheimer's disease in anything less than days to weeks to months. And we're here, we're doing it in 10 minutes. Now, obviously, again, it's we've done the Kitty Hawk flight, which is, you know, the, the contraption went, 120 feet at 40 miles an hour and it's like you know we haven't flown people to Europe back and forth but obviously you know after the Wright brothers did make that flight with improvements and further steps one could obviously um, get to that point quickly and that of course will depend on how much funds Halbert gets and who our partners are that we are now presently looking to and talking to. Cool. So it seems like one of the biggest challenges with this, uh, I like to think of things from a marketing perspective. I mean, it's such a big idea that you know uh, your, your approach can eradicate disease that it almost seems like a tough sell. But then on the other hand, if you know someone's a VC, uh, they like that asymmetric upside because that's what they're looking for. Um, but can you talk a little bit about the marketing challenges for uh, the Felder Doctrine and why why hasn't this gotten more mainstream attention? Like, it seems like, you know, anyone that, like you said, a billionaire dying of, uh, everyone's dying, right? Just a matter of at what pace. But if you're a billionaire, yeah. you're probably in your 50s, maybe your 60s. Um, what else are you going to bet on aside from trying to extend your life? You have everything. You can buy everything you don't have. But why aren't people, uh, why hasn't this gotten more attention, I guess, is, is, is my, uh, my thought. It hasn't gotten more attention because nobody ever heard of us. Nobody ever heard of, of Dr. Mitchell Felder. Nobody, very few people have heard of Halbert. Uh, we're located in Western Pennsylvania around the Rust Belt. And it's like, hi, uh, everybody, we believe we could cure cancer, cure Alzheimer's disease, cure just about any infectious disease. It's like, yeah, right. I mean, until you have definitively proven it, it's like people say, okay, uh, uh, Professor Einstein, why don't you, this e equals MC squared, it all fits together. Why don't you build an atom bomb in your backyard, blow it up, and now we kind of believe you. That's sort of the situation we're constantly in. It's like, oh, why don't you do this in animals and then, um, and then now we believe you, but it's a kind of a situation where we're afraid we'll start getting help at the exact moment we don't need the help. Right now, we can obviously use some help. Yeah, it's a little bit of a chicken and the egg, right? Like at the point yeah, in exactly. which you could definitively prove you can successfully do this in a monkey, you're already so far along your journey that to go from like, like you would use the analogy with the Wright brothers, uh, which is a great story, by the way. Um, but if you have taken a flight and you've already flown around the US, you know, flying to Europe and back or, or you know, across the world isn't that much of a, a leap. The leap is going from zero to one, as, as you know, Peter Thiel says, like going from zero flight to flying off the ground. And that's where you need the most help. But that's also where people doubt 
the belief and the possibility the most because it's such a paradigm shift. It's such a, a revolutionary idea and it has such large implications that it's just so easy to say, well, that can't be done because it's never been done. But everything in life can't be done until it's been done, right? Like every, every breakthrough has never happened until it's happened. And so there's always that zero to one process where the people that are involved take the most risk, they get the most upside, but there's also the most, uh, that's the biggest challenge around that subject in that phase. And that sounds like Dr. Felder, where you guys are at right now, where you're at that inception moment where you've had these incremental uh, process, these incremental breakthroughs, but to really get to that next level requires a lot of attention, um, funding, partnerships, and manpower to accelerate your journey. But at the same time, it's the hardest point to get that manpower because you have the least to show for it. Does that sound like kind of where you're at? That's it. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, I do say that people should keep in mind that, you know, we're not a bunch of, you know, gas station attendants running around saying, gee, I think we can cure cancer. I mean, we have Arizona State University, the brilliant, brilliant Professor Chen and Youngstown State University, the top professor at the school, uh, Professor Sturris. So again, we have quite a few people already that are working on this process, but our manpower right now is very, very, very small. And as I said, this is literally the Manhattan Project. And the Manhattan Project, you know, as I said, took tens of thousands of people and hundreds and hundreds of scientists, some of who had won the Nobel Prize. So we're a small group right now, but we hope to get bigger and massively accelerate this process. Yep, that's why we're here. So thank you guys. Uh, thank you for your time, Dr. Felder. I really appreciate this. If you guys have questions, be sure to leave them in the description below. And uh, perhaps we'll do a follow-up, an open Q&A or something like that if we get enough questions around this subject. So thank you for your time today. Thank you. I very much appreciate you having me at your program. Thank you for your attention and letting us share our vision of how we can help eradicate infectious diseases worldwide. As I mentioned at the start, my goal with this is to raise awareness in hopes to find people who can help us further our mission. There are many ways you can help, from financial to marketing. If you or someone you know is looking for an asymmetric opportunity with the potential to impact millions of lives, please get in touch with me directly through the contact info in the description. I'm Alec Torelli. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.